Go away, you swine! Leave, or I'll make you bleed! These all came from the swamps. Could be toting contraband. Bones! Help me! Do not fight the calling! <laughs> Blood! I beg of you, home! For dying! Relive your blood! Oh, oh, no. No, it, it can't be. It can't end like this. Uh, again, this nightmare haunts me. It won't let me forget. How did this all begin? Good morning, Holmes. Looks like a typical London day. Fog in the morning, fog in the afternoon. Ha! And here's a surprise, fog in the evening. Good morning, Watson. Can you imagine? I have been at it since 5 a.m. and I scarcely think my list of patients for the day has even been touched. What is more insufferable, I haven't even had a moment with the morning paper. They say the minister will assuredly... Holmes! Whatever is the matter, you haven't heard a word I have said. It is the tedium, my dear Watson. Life is ordinary, the papers are lifeless. Any hint of audacity, and dare I say, romance has vanished from the criminal world. Holmes, it is only temporary. You know perfectly well that sooner or later an exceptional incident will occur in London or thereabout which cannot rest till the talents of Sherlock Holmes are called into play. Then it will be up to your agile wit to set things right, which should satisfy your constant need for mental gymnastics. I hope the heavens hear your words, Watson. I hope they do indeed. I must take my leave, Holmes. I have an appointment with a rather odious man, Captain Stenick. He is apparently in a state, with near tachycardia due to some problem involving his manservant. Why don't you get out for a brisk walk, Holmes? Perhaps buy a newspaper or visit that fellow, Barnes, over on Glentworth Street. You might remember him, the bookseller. He has some new volumes of the particular sort that should occupy your mind for a time.
strand, the strand, by the strand. Strand, strand, by the strand. So, my young friend, what is the news? Nothing of interest for the great detective, sir. Those old stuffed shirts ate up half of London at their big scientific to do, and some Candace Navia princess is driving the locals wild with curiosity. A Scandinavian royal is in London? If you and the lads can look sharp and find out more about her visit, there will be some coin for your pockets. Right on, Mr. Holmes. If there's aught to be found, the irregulars will have it. I'll send the words out to the lads. It is necessary to keep my informants in fighting form. I have no reason to go there. 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 Pardon me, I'm looking for the Barnes Bookshop. Would you happen to know it? I know the place, know it well, Mr. Holmes. The bookshop is on Glentworth Street. Take your first right and then the next left and you'll find it straight away. My respect, Miss Fleming. Good day, Mr. Holmes. I have no reason to go there. How are you? I have some new novels that should interest you. A nice illustrated volume on fish and a collection of legends on piracy. They must be here somewhere. Those flowers need watering. What can I do for you, Mr. Holmes? Book about sea fauna.
appears to be a trace of shoe leather. Did somebody fall here? By the way, Barnes, before some misfortune befalls you, I am quite certain Miss Fleming, the flower saleswoman, would prefer chocolates to a fractured bone. But how could you know that? Indeed, even she, I mean, I told no one about this, other than Dr. Watson, that is. Oh, I see now how it goes. Not at all. Watson would never reveal a confidential matter of professional trust. He did, however, mention your fine shop and your novelties. Knowing his views on classical literature, I doubt there would be any inducement to enter your shop unless it was professional business. What would trouble a man of your age and position sufficient to require the services of a doctor? I noticed trace of shoe leather on the stepladder and deduced that you no doubt lost your balance, fell, and likely suffered a nasty sprain. As for the flowers, you deliberately let them die and left this sad display open to the public, hoping, no doubt, that their supplier would notice and take great efforts to come and replace them. Also, I know Miss Fleming to be a statuesque woman, so typical of the Scandinavians. I noted that you would likely wear shoes with a higher heel, so that you and Miss Fleming, should she arrive, see more eye to eye. Unfortunately, climbing about on ladders and the like in such shoes is a risky business, isn't it? Indeed, it is, Mr. Holmes. Believe me, Barnes, try chocolates next time. And besides, it requires a bit more than well-heeled shoes to find a proper soulmate. Don't you agree? Ah, Miss Fleming. My respect, Miss Fleming. I have no reason to go there. This won't be of any use to me. I have no reason to go there. I have no reason to go there.
I have no reason to go there. Miss Fleming. Ah, the pirate's book. I will take them. Thank you, and goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Ah, it's good that I've found you, Holmes. As I told you this morning, I've visited Captain Stenick. Although his symptoms are not serious, the circumstances which caused his palpitations are quite peculiar. Perhaps you can make something of it. Here is Captain Stenick and Sergeant Rufels. Captain, I understand from Watson you are quite upset. Any man will be the same, and with less provocation. My servant has left in the middle of the night. Damned ungrateful after all I have done for him. To top it off, he knows not one word of English. Finally, if he causes any damage, I will bear the brunt of people's anger and suffer the consequences, as I am the person who brought him to England. How long was he in your employment, and is he accustomed to vanishing in this manner? We returned from Australia more than five months ago now. But to his credit, he never left this house before now. He is afraid of the city, as are many inhabitants from open spaces. Could he have stolen something? Upon my word, no. How much money does he have on his person? Frankly speaking, he didn't have any money. I kept his wages for him, and they are in my safe. In any event, what the deuce would he have a need for money? Who knew that he worked at your home, and had he any contacts here in London? Anyone who deals with me professionally knows Baopa is my personal servant. As for his contacts, they are limited to the delivery men who bring food or other items to my home. What reason could he have to see anyone other than myself? Have you found anything, Mr. Holmes? Now then, Sergeant, what is it about, and what elements of the crime do you have documented? Referring to the official report, the following particulars were taken down. A young Maori responding to the name Baalpa was reported missing by his employer, Mr. Stenick. 
no one in the surrounding area saw or heard anything relevant to this incident. In truth, we rarely concern ourselves with cases such as this, but the lad speaks not a single word of English, and according to his employer, has considerable strength. Considering the wild customs of his native land, who knows what damage he could cause? You must know, Mr Holmes, there have been a few similar cases reported recently. The facts are much the same. Immigrants from the poor districts have been reported missing by their families. We expect that some low-class brothel has opened its doors to the local exotics, and Mr Holmes, you can imagine how word would spread. Mark my words, with his unique looks and speech, we'll find this boy in no time. I imagine he'll have nothing worse to show than empty pockets and a delighted air. That is a possibility, to be sure. However, I would be most grateful if you could ask your superiors to send me the reports about those similar cases. I rely on you, Ruffles. Watson, continue your search here. I must follow another lead. I have no reason to go there. 